Hey, this is Leo for Actualize.org. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you how to do goal setting. Okay, let's talk about goal setting. How do you go about setting powerful goals and making sure that those goals actually get realized? We've all been at that place after New Year's resolution time, right? A week after New Year's and we set some sort of big ambitious goal and then what happens? We all know what happens, it falls through. So how do we turn that around? And how do we make goals work not only for New Year's time but throughout the whole year? And how do we make them practical and something that is actually changing our life, transforming our life for the better? I mean, personally, I've struggled with goals for a long time, and that's because they seem simple. They seem obvious, but this is deceptively so. You need to go in there and start to look into what actually makes goals work and what is not relevant so that you can set proper, powerful goals to achieve your dreams. And that's ultimately why we care about this, right? The goal setting process is important only for that reason. If you're like me, then you have big dreams for your life. You know that you're capable of so much more than you're currently realizing. And what that means is that you have some sort of dream, you have some sort of vision, you have some sort of grand castle in the sky for maybe what your relationship could be like or what your career could be like, how your business might be thriving, what your health might be like, uh, what your lifestyle is like. So all of those areas in your life to achieve big things in those places, then you need to have some sort of goals to get you there, right? A dream is like a very big overarching goal. But then you need to break that down into smaller chunks so that you can actually go and implement it. So let's talk about how to do this and where people make mistakes with the goal setting process. Because I've made these mistakes and I still make these mistakes even though I've studied this stuff because it's just very obvious, uh, it's just very easy to overlook this stuff. It is. So let's take a look at that. The first thing I gotta tell you, and this is, uh, this is a very important realization for you to have, is that right now, you probably don't have any goals at all. This is the number one reason that people are not getting much, much, much more success in life is simply because they do not have goals. And now you might be listening to this and you might be into self-development and you might have done already some work on yourself and you might be saying, well, Leo, I know that's, that's, a, that's a bad way to go about life, having no goals, so I have some goals for my life. And what I'm trying to tell you here is that even you, if you think that you have goals right now, actually you don't have any goals. So let's clarify what this actually means because this will be a shocking revelation to you. And the reason that you're not getting more success in your life is because you don't have goals, but you think you do. And in order to fix a problem, first you gotta realize that you have one. So this is how we start unearthing all this is that we discover that there's a problem here. The problem is that you're deceiving yourself about the goals that you're setting. So why am I saying this? I mean, you might have some goals. Even someone who's not into personal development will pr probably still say that they have a couple of goals for their life. Well, here is my definition of what a goal is relative to what other people think it is. See, most people think a goal is a desire a vague desire of wanting something, of wanting something better, right? Isn't that what a goal is in popular culture? It's just a desire, that's what it is. Like, oh, you know, I wish I had a nicer house. You know, I wish I had a better marriage. You know, I wish my business was earning twice as much. You know, I wish that I was a little bit healthier. I wish that I lived in a different city. I wish I drove a better car. I wish I wasn't so negative, so critical all the time. So these kind of vague wishes. And when you have a wish like this, it's, I mean, you gotta start somewhere. So that's all right, you can start there. But the problem is that people stay there and they stay there for years. They stay there for their whole life. And then they wonder why they don't get what they want. Well, that's because what they had was they had a very vague, loosey-goosey desire for something they don't even know exactly what. And it wasn't a goal. Here's what a real goal is. I would say there's about five points that constitute a proper and true goal. And if you're not hitting all five of these points, then what you've got is you've got a desire. 
you don't have a goal, and therefore, it's not gonna work the way a goal should work. It's not gonna get you as motivated as it needs to. It's not gonna get you taking action in the way that you want to. It's, it's, not, gonna, it's not gonna inspire you. And ultimately, it's not gonna get realized. It's just gonna remain in fantasy land. So here are the five points. Point number one is that a goal has to be specific. Specific, very, very clear. Your goal has to be crystal clear. I'm gonna go into more depth on each one of these points right now. I just wanna throw all the points out there. So point number one is specific. Point number two is your goal has to be big and compelling. Your goals have to be big. Point number three is that they have to be written down. It doesn't count if it's just in your head. It has to be written down. Point number four is that you have to review your goal every single day, like clockwork, review it every single day. And point number five is that your goal has to be aligned with your highest values. All right, so these are my five points for extremely effective and practical goal setting. If you hit all five of these points with your goal, you are gonna be miles and miles closer towards actually realizing it. So let's go into each one of these points a little bit and, uh, and elaborate. Specific, most, people goal, most people's goals fail right here, is that they're simply not specific at all. You have some vague notion that you wanna live somewhere else, but you haven't specified what country, what city, what street, what neighborhood, what the conditions are for a good place to live or a bad place to live, so your chances of getting there are very, very slim. Or your business, maybe you wanna start a new business, or you wanna take your business and you wanna improve the current one you've got, but it's just a vague desire, maybe a vague desire to be earning a little bit more money or to be a little bit more financially secure, but what does that mean? What does that really mean? How many extra dollars do you need to be earning per day, per month, per year? You have to articulate that. You have to be very clear. What kind of business do you want? What do you want your business to be doing? What exactly? Not some vague, wishy-washy mission statement. Something very, very concrete and exact and crystal clear. The more clear you can be about what you want, then your chances of having it are astronomically increased. So this is probably the biggest place where most people fail. And I coach so many people, and people come into coaching with me, and obviously they come in because they have a desire to improve their life in some way, but these desires are so, so, so vague, so a lot of the work that we do is on clarification. And that alone right there, it might seem like it's so simple. Well, clarification, you know, is that really important, you might wonder? It's critically important. It's so important that you would be shocked, which is why a lot of times clients will come in and work with me for just a few sessions. We get so much clarity, they have more clarity about their life than they've had in decades. Literally people who have been running businesses or having successful careers for decades, then they come in and they, they talk to me for a couple of hours. They have more clarity about what they're doing in their life than they have for years. It's ridiculous. Just because you start to dig into it, you start to ask the right questions, they start to see how little they really know about what they want. And then it's like, oh, that's why I've been stuck so long. Because I don't know what I'm actually going after, right? So specificity is very critical. The next point is size, the size of the goal. The goal has to be big. The best way to uh, explain this is just uh, with an example. Do you think it's easier to lose five pounds and keep it off or to lose 50 pounds and to keep it off? It might seem like losing five pounds would be easier because what does it take to lose five pounds? Maybe go to the gym consistently for a couple of weeks, diet a little bit, and you can drop your five pounds. What does it take to lose 50 pounds? Well, you gotta go to the gym for months, you gotta really work your ass off hard, you gotta really retrain your diet and your, your nutrition habits and be very consistent with it for a very long time and then maybe you can lose 50 pounds. But you know what? For most people, losing 50 pounds is actually gonna be easier than losing five. And that's because the goal, the aspirational component of this goal, the vision of the goal, is more inspiring and more motivating when there's something juicy to it, something juicy behind it. When your goal is incremental, when it's small, when it's not very significant, then your brain is not gonna get activated to actually start to make the changes that are necessary to create that goal and then to sustain that goal. That's why so many people have these little yo-yo diets where they lose five pounds, drop five pounds, and they just keep doing that back and forth. 
because it's very hard to motivate yourself to lose five pounds. You can't register five pounds. No one's going to see you uh, being five pounds lighter. You're not going to get any compliments. You're not going to look much sexier by losing five pounds. But if you lose 50 pounds, you can imagine all of a sudden, wow, that, that can really have a big effect on my life. You can imagine, hmm, I'm going to look totally different in my photos. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be much more energetic. And I'm going to also have more options with the opposite sex. So my dating life's going to get better. My sex life's going to improve. So all these factors now start to come into your mind. And now you're, you're like, wow, you know, uh, I, I can actually do this. Sure, it's going to take some work. But you know what? I can, I can see that the, the outcome is going to be worth it. And so that's what a big goal is setting a big goal. So many people make the mistake of, of laying it up and saying, well, I can't lose 50 pounds or like, well, I can't start a million dollar business or, well, you know, I'll set some sort of goal, but I don't want to set a big goal because if I set a big goal, then there's a chance that I won't be able to, to, to realize it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a little goal with the hope that I can realize that because it's not so ambitious. Well, the problem with that strategy is that when you set a little goal, you run an even greater risk of not achieving it because you're not even going to get activated to go and try it. It's going to be so unmotivating to you. The biggest problem you have is complacency. It's not over ambition. So go ahead and shoot for being over ambitious rather than um, under ambitious with your goals. Okay, the third point is write the goal down. You have to write it down. If it's just in your head, it's too loose. It's too vague. It's still too vague. Even if you've clarified it in your head, you have to actually write it down. When you write it down, there's something magical that happens. Your brain registers it in a different way, plus it's there on paper so you can always refer back to it. Which leads me to the fourth point. The fourth point was to review your goal on a daily basis. This is where people get it completely wrong. Almost nobody does this. I would say less than 0.001% of people who set goals will actually review them on a daily basis. And this is the whole point of setting a goal. You write it down and then you look at it in the morning, in the evening, at lunchtime, whenever you get a chance, but you have to look at it every single day until it's accomplished. You have to look at it, review it in your mind. So it's always on the top of your mind. Otherwise, you're going to forget about it. Just writing down some, some lofty goal and then stuffing it in your filing cabinet and never looking at it again, how's it going to get realized? I mean, if it's a very little goal, that might work. If it's a goal that takes one day to accomplish, that might work. But if it's a goal that takes a month, or six months, or a year, or five years to accomplish, which are what most significant and meaningful goals are like, then you're never going to accomplish that just by writing it down once and then stuffing it in a drawer somewhere. You have to read it again and again and again. And the fifth point, the last point, is that your goal has to be aligned with your values. This is a bit of a deeper topic that is hard to go into here because I just want to keep this focused on the goal setting process. But you have to know your values. I have other videos that talk about value identification, discovering who you really are, what is most meaningful to you in life. When you discover that, when you know your life purpose and you know what your values are, I help people do that through coaching. But when you figure that out and you know exactly what your top 10 values are, then your goals need to be aligned with that, right? Whatever your top values are, your goals have to match up with it. Because if they don't, what's going to happen, I found this a lot in my own life, is that you're going to go out and you're going to start to do stuff and you're going to set various goals for yourself and those goals are not going to be grounded in anything important. They're mostly going to come from just random ideas that you get from society. Maybe you see something on TV and all of a sudden you get some idea to go lose some weight. Or you see some, some friend of yours driving a nice car and you get this idea that, oh, I'm, you know, I need a nice car too. And you go out there and you start doing this stuff and it doesn't fulfill you. And so then the whole goal pr setting process breaks down because you see yourself creating these goals, but then you see that the goals are not fulfilling you. And so you stop setting goals. And the reason that's happening is because you're setting goals that are not aligned with what you really want in life. And the reason that is, is because you're not clear about what you want in life. So first clarify what you want, then start to create goals that align with it. That's going to be the last point that's really, really critical. And as a, f as a final wrap up here before I leave you, what I want to mention as the last real point is, is the fact that your goals, no matter how good you get with this goal setting process, you have to be okay with the fact that not all of your goals are going to get accomplished. And that's not a failure on your part per se. It's actually a good thing. You don't want every single one of your goals to get accomplished. There's a reason that this goal setting process kind of happens the way it does. It's because if you could just instantly get everything that you wanted, uh, it wouldn't be actually healthy for your life. 
What's better is to, to go through this process and to set goals, set lots of goals, create lists of goals, and then as you're working towards them, you're gonna to start to see like, oh, okay, so to accomplish this goal right here, I'm gonna actually have to go and like put in a lot of money, a lot of energy, a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of emotional labor. You know what? I've realized that that's not actually something I wanna do. So then you cross it off. You don't need that goal anymore. That wasn't a really genuine goal for you. Then you go on to the next goal and you say, oh, you know what, this goal, yeah, it's gonna be, I can see how this is gonna take months of work and it's gonna be very difficult and it's gonna maybe cost me some money. But you know what, even if uh, all those costs are analyzed, I still want that goal, that's still important to me. And see there, what happened was that you saw the cost of the goal and you actually maybe even went out and tried to, uh, tried to make it happen in one place or another. And then you saw like, oh, you know what, this is harder than I thought it was, but it's still worthwhile. Right? This is how you grow yourself, this is how you discover yourself, is when you kind of push your boundaries and you start to actually see the costs of your goals. Because every goal, every meaningful goal has a cost. You're not just going to go and build a business with no cost. You're not going to create a relationship with no cost. You're not going to create uh, the kind of health you want with no cost. You're not going to improve your psychology and get rid of your negative thinking with no cost. There's always some sort of cost. And don't make the mistake of thinking that, that that has to be money. Many times it's not money. And money is actually an easy cost to pay. The harder costs are the emotional labor costs that are involved. You know, the emotional labor involved with losing weight or uh, admitting to yourself that you suck in relationships and they have to improve there. Or starting to introspect and get rid of your negative thinking and your anxiety. These kinds of things. These are much harder. And it would be so nice if we could just pay a little bit of money to get that problem fixed. But ultimately, you can't pay someone to, to do that for you. As Jim Rohn says, you can't pay someone to do your push-ups for you. You have to do them yourself. And so realize that if you're making lists of goals and you're a very ambitious person, for example, me, you know, I literally have lists that have 50, 100 goals on them for the year. But invariably, you know, that year passes and I realize that only about 20% of them get accomplished. The other 80% they never do. Even though my goals are specific, they're big, and they're important to me, I feel like they are at the moment when I write them down, eventually what I find happens is that there's this kind of sifting process that happens. And the weaker goals, they get sifted out and nothing, no action gets taken on them. But those top 20%, those are the ones you really want to focus on, right? Those are the ones that are big and that you're going to have motivation to do. So as you're making these lists, it's okay. Don't beat yourself up for not accomplishing everything. You don't have to be perfect. You won't be. In fact, it's a good thing because if you're accomplishing everything on all your lists, that means you're not prioritizing your time effectively. You want to be focusing your time on those top 20% of the goals that you have that are really going to make a big, meaningful impact on your life. So that's a totally good way to, to work the goals and to, to work them throughout the year. All right, so this is what I have to say about goal setting. Follow these points and you're going to have really, really powerful, effective goals, not just New Year's resolutions, but you can do this throughout the entire year. All right, this is Leo, I'm signing off. Go ahead and please leave me your comments down below. Please, if you like this, go ahead and click the like button so that this video can get boosted higher and go ahead and share it with your friends. And then of course, if you like this video and you like this content, then come check out actualize.org, sign up to my newsletter. Actualize.org is all about helping you to self-actualize. And what that means is how do you actually move towards the dreams that you have, right? How do you unleash your full potential in life? Whatever it is that you want, your inner development, whatever kind of circumstance you want to set up in your life, how do you actually go about doing that? I've spent so much time in my own life struggling with that, trying to find ways and the best techniques and strategies. And now what I've committed my life to is sharing those with you. So every week I'm releasing new videos, new articles, other goodies, all of it for free. that You can sign up and to receive. And what I found the value here is, is that we help keep you on track, right? Because if you've got these bigger dreams, these lofty ambitions and these goals, you have to have some sort of reminders in place. You have to have a system where you're getting reminded of new strategies, new techniques and tips. And that's what I created actualize.org for is to help you stay on track with that process, right? Stay on track with that process and hopefully make you a hobbyist of personal development because I've gotten so much benefit from being a hobbyist of personal development. I wanna share all those rewards that I've received in my life. I wanna share those with you. I wanna show you how you can create an extraordinary kind of life for yourself by just getting involved with the process and just keeping up with it on a weekly, continuous basis, small chunking it until you create an extraordinary level of quality in your life.